What if your client doesn't like your design or if you simply as a designer are not feeling what you just created? So the first step is to actually step away from your design. Maybe one to two hours or even an entire day. Giving yourself a mini break is essential in this process and actually it leads on to the rest of the process we're going to talk about in today's video and how you can turn a bad design into potentially your best work. Now you first want to look at the design from a purely technical aspect. In this first step, we want to remind ourselves of the graphic design principles and see if our design has potentially failed in specific areas of those principles. So to demonstrate, we're right here on Freepik looking at a business poster template. Let's imagine for a second this is your work. You've made it and you're obviously not happy with it. Well, considering just graphic design principles and principles only, and before we look at the next steps in the process of revamping your design, where is this design going wrong? How has the designer used principles in a good way? And where does the design fall short in terms of principles? Let's break the good news first. Alignment has been used pretty well, and this helps create structure and it helps the typography just look a bit neater. Hierarchy has been used, but it for sure can be improved. And we do have balance in terms of the focal points on the right and the information on the left. But that's where it ends, unfortunately. And here's what I did to revamp this design using just some principles. And I felt first that the info and the design in general was just too cramped. So I moved things here to the right and the information to the left just a smidgen. So now we have more macro and more micro white space to play with. And that's going to just help everything else fit together perfectly. So there's no proximity at all in terms of the typography on the left. It was all just lumped together, making it a nightmare to read. So I broke things down into three distinct proximity groups. Then I realized there was no real emphasis on this design. For the most part, it was just white and orange. So adding in this blue gave some well needed contrast and it kind of gives the design a breath of fresh air, if that makes sense. I also wasn't too keen on the font choices. So I went for something more modern and digital, something that fits slightly more with this design message. So yeah, one last time, what is the first step after that initial break that we need to take? For the first step, remind yourself of the basics and how your design respects those basics or not. Now, after you've gone through that checklist, we have possibly a more important question to ask with the next step. What was the goal of your design and what do you want the audience to feel when they look at your design? Every single design has a purpose, be it to inform the audience or entice a group of people to buy something or whatever it is, there is always a goal or purpose behind a design. This design's goal is to sell clothing and make it desirable. It achieves this by having a lot of white space which emphasizes the clothing while the models and the clothing are the focal points. Also, the typography and design choices align with the modern and sleek sense of fashion. So the message and the goal here is achieved. So ask yourself this, does my design meet the goals of the brief? Is the message being evoked properly? And does it take into consideration those things the client said 20 times over? Once you've gone ahead and determined that your design does achieve the goal, or when we actually know what we need to change to make the design fulfill its purpose, we want the design to evoke the feeling or feelings in the audience. Now, if say, for example, the design you're working on is for an organic beauty product, the feeling you might want to evoke is one of cleanliness and purity. For that design to work, you might want to include more white space than it already does have. And also you might use a very restricted color palette, one that uses pastel type desaturated colors. The typography choices might be minimal, and this is to keep in line with that purity aspect of the feeling. Now, if your design ultimately doesn't give the target audience the correct feeling, then that design isn't going to be that effective and you won't be fulfilling your role as a designer properly. But here's another example. With this design here, They've tried to make the viewer feel maybe a bit shocked and a bit scared while being intrigued at the same time. And this is so they hope that they're going to have the urge to watch this media piece about the Chernobyl disaster. The next step is actually quite a tough one for a lot of designers because it means we're going to start removing parts of our design. We want to remove unnecessary aspects of our design. 
things that just have no purpose or which will cramp the design and confuse the viewer. For example, take a look at this landing page right here. Now, do you think this appears cluttered in any way? What things would you possibly consider removing from this design? So firstly, we can make the focal point just slightly less dominant so it doesn't cramp the design in general. And this is quite easy to do and it still remains the dominant focal point, only now we have more space. Now as much as this illustration in the top left is pretty cool, let's remove that as well. Then below that, this piece of copy text isn't necessary and it doesn't help the design in any way whatsoever. That looks pretty good, but you might have felt that the camera illustration did add something unique to the design. So we can use it, but just in a smarter way, including it in a smaller scale alongside the social media links in the bottom left. And it's just a case of knowing what is needed, thinking about scale and white space, and just making the experience one that is smooth and comfortable for the viewer. Of course, this totally depends on your brief and the projects that you're working on. It is possible that your brief calls for a very hectic and chaotic layout, but in general terms, we want to remove things that don't belong. It's wise to save your design as a copy. You don't want to end up with trash canning half of your design and then having instant regret later down the line in the project. So remember, the first thing to do is to notice that feeling you get where you think the design isn't quite right or there's something just wrong with it. Then take a break from your design, just half an hour, maybe one hour, or just sleep on it. Then run through the design principles and see if your design respects them, uses them, or in fact has errors in relation to them. Next, remind yourself what is the goal of your design? What is it trying to achieve? And from that, you should know what you want the audience to feel when they see your design. And then lastly, remove any unnecessary clutter and try and make use of white space on your design. Now, if you run through this process, I can guarantee your designs will be so much more effective because of it. A lot of resources used in today's video were actually sourced directly from Envato Elements. And it's something I personally use on a daily basis just to save time in my workflows. On Envato, there are millions of resources that designers can use on their projects. And lately, I've been grabbing a bunch of resources from the 3D section. You can even just click and rotate and choose the kind of point of view you want to download, which is pretty neat. There are tons of downloads though, and for all kinds of different projects and styles. And you can be confident using them on your designs because it's a one license fits all kind of deal when you sign up to Envato. And you can find Envato Elements linked in the description box below. But if you want to learn how to incorporate some really high level design skills onto your designs, just click that video on screen. And until next time guys, design a future today. Peace.